All right, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit. We got a lot to fill in. Maybe a little different style of video today. So let's just dive in. me that I know it's been a long summer uh, lots of stuff going on I've been busy working on plenty of stuff trust me uh, the main reason for the absence I'll try to keep this short and sweet I think last video I talked about it real quick um, I'd cut myself pretty bad on my car um, I had to get a bunch of stitches long story short don't want to go into a lot of detail it wasn't healing up good got the stitches out wasn't healing weeks go by wasn't healing um, I ended up going to a specialist a wound specialist they, for a better word terms, you know, clean it out and they had to like wrap my leg and compression wrap it and everything. So anyways, I couldn't be on my leg much for like a month, uh, but now it's finally healed up. So I need to catch up on some work. The Terminator that was here, I got, had to get it wrapped up and get it out. Got it done pretty quick. Once I was able to work on it, been doing tons of work on my car, got a new car here, but a garage update will come next. I didn't want this video to be a garage update. Um, it seems like I only do a video every couple months and they're always garage updates, so I didn't want to do that. So we got a different style of video here today. I don't know if anyone else watches these, but I've watched a few like what's in your toolbox videos or a toolbox tour. You can see I got a new toolbox here um, on the other side of my garage. And I was trying to decide what to get in. I ended up putting like all of my electrical stuff in this. So this houses everything that I use electrical supplies and tools. So we're gonna go over kind of what's in this toolbox, but I'm also probably gonna name this like what tools is needed to wire your race car, street car. Um, so we're gonna go over all that. I got all the supplies in here as well. And then I even have all my electronics on here. Um, I have 95% of the electronics for my car. They're here, I wanna just kinda of go over what I'm gonna be using in my car, the ECU and all the extra stuff. I kinda of went overboard on the electronics for this new car. I just wanted it to be amazing and awesome and top level. So I went overboard on supplies and the actual electronics. So we're gonna go over all that. I wanted this to be a shorter video, but I'm already talking too long. So let's just uh, dive in here. Okay, I'm gonna to try to hold the camera very still. Um, and then maybe I'll use the tripod as I go through the drawers to show you. But so this is going to we're going to cover the electronics first of kind of what I'm all I'm doing. If you hadn't guessed yet or you didn't know I'm doing Holly on the new car. What's crazy is I have a race car wiring series and it was actually a fuel tech deal. Um, so I don't have any videos of me wiring a Holly really, maybe a little bit on Dave's car, but my last car that I did all the Holly stuff on was before I was making videos. So this uh, I'm going to have a series. This will probably be part one what the equipment is and what tools it takes to wire a street car or race car, if that applies to you. But here I am, let's just go quick through the Holly stuff. I got the Holly Dominator here. The red one is the lightweight one. So this weighs like 50% less than a normal Dominator. It's like a pound or a pound and a half. It's not a ton, but you notice it, like if you ever pick up Dominator, they have some weight. This one feels pretty light. They use like a different potting material in them, but it's only like $100 more, maybe $200 more. So if you're buying a Dominator new, you should get this one. The big, awesome 12 inch Holly Dash. This is high resolution, awesome thing. Um, these fit perfect in a Fox body cluster. So I had to do the awesome Dash. I, I love these things. I've wanted one forever, so finally got one. Both of these items were hard to get. Now I think they're easy to get, but when I ordered them a few months ago, they took forever to get. Anyways, EGT system. I think I got the main harness, unterminated harness down there. Um, a, a six injector driver module for 60 injectors. You probably would guess then what fuel I'm doing. Um, Coyote Direct, and let's see, give a shout out to them boys at Coyote Direct. They helped me get a lot of this Holly stuff and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, they don't just do new Mustangs, they do a whole bunch of stuff. So if you need parts, be sure to hit up Dave. He'll, he'll get you hooked up. He's helped me out a ton in all this stuff. Moving along, um, I think that's just like a connector box there with all the connectors. So then we have all the harnesses, 16 injector harness, J1AB, J2A, J2B. This is the smart wire kit for, or yeah, the big wire kit for the smart coils. Here's all the smart coils, map sensor and 100 PSI sensors for the oil and everything. So that's kind of quick overview of all the Holly stuff. I actually have a whole nother Holly system here for this car. We'll go over that in my garage update. Not now, that may be getting some precision turbos. Moving on, sorry, I'm just trying to go through quick. Don't want to make this too long, too boring. 
Um, I know you see my switch panel there, but before we talk about the switch panel, we need to talk about why I have that switch panel. So we'll, we'll go over all this stuff in a sec, don't worry, but this is what we need to get to. ECU Master PMU-16. I am so excited to talk about this real quick. I'll try not to bore you with the details. Normally, you would see like a relay board. This is a PDM, so this would replace your relay board. Um, nothing wrong with relay boards. I still use them all the time. Leash Street Strip Board is my favorite. That thing is amazing. I had it in my last car. Love them, love leash, love those boards. But this car, I wanted to go next level and these are crazy. So uh, PDM replaces your relay. You have one power coming in and then all the power coming out. It's a solid state sit up. It's got a lot of functionality built into it. You can do a lot of cool stuff. The reason I hadn't done one yet, everyone asked me on my last car, why didn't you do a PDM? Why didn't you do a PDM? Because the one company, what, Holly Street, was it Street Wire or Smart Wire, sorry. Smart Wire, their PDM. Um, it's a great PDM, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't do a lot of power. If you want to power your smart coils with your PDM, the uh, smart wire doesn't allow you to do it. It doesn't have enough power. How silly is that? You spend $2,000 plus dollars on your relay system and it won't even power your smart coils. You have to do another relay box for $100 that looks terrible to power your, your smart coils. How silly is that? That makes no sense. So I've struggled with it. I'm sure you know people will talk about it in the comments, whatever. Um, that's my impression of it. I've talked to other people, but what's cool about the ECU Master is it has big leads. So it can do more channels with more power. And what's really cool about it is it's, it's like borderline can almost do it already. And we can talk specifics when it comes down to it, but it, it can borderline almost do the smart coils as is. But what's even cooler about it is you can take two of your bigger power outputs of this and join them together to get even more amperage out of this thing. So this will easily power your smart coils. And I even talked to the company about it, told them, you know, you know, high boosted methanol setup, you know, can this power? They're like, oh yeah, we got tons of customers doing it. No big deal. So, and these things have crazy logic. I could talk all day about this. We'll probably make a video uh, in itself on these. Um, these are, I think, I did a ton and ton of research on PDMs, and I think this is just by far the best one out there. Super cool logic, failover logic, and just, um, it can read the Holly data um, in through CAN. It seems like you gotta do some little bit of configuring, but we're gonna learn all that. But you can, you know, do tons of logic on your relays and when to turn on and off stuff based on the data coming from the Holly. Like, I'm, I'm really, really excited to get to start playing with this. But I'm already talking too much. Let's keep rolling. But what's cool about these is they also have the CAN um, switch panel. So these will have like stickers that will tell you what button is what. I haven't set it up yet. But um, that's that. And what's cool about these is they can be anything. You can change all the buttons to any color. They can be latching, momentary. You can do all sorts of different stages of stuff. So you can like change up your tune-ups or whatever you need to do. These, these are super programmable in conjunction with this. And, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, this is, I made this switch panel real quick. Um, Maven, shout out Maven. Um, that guy is awesome. So he sells these like universal roll bar mounts. So I just cut out a piece of carbon fiber. I put one of these, you know, switches on it that the emergency stops. So I have an electronic kill switch in the new car. So I can just bam, hit that and it from the driver's seat and it'll kill everything. But like all my ignition and stuff will be on here. So, and I just trimmed this out carbon piece real quick and drilled some holes and then put it on Maven stuff. What's cool about Maven, and I'm sure if you've done switch panels, you know, you always have to like just zip tie your wires right above this to your roll bar that's coming through there. Well, this guy, Maven, he thinks about that. He's well, hey, why wouldn't we just create a little notch so our wires can come through here and we don't need them ugly and kinked around the roll bar? It's small stuff like that that makes uh, uh, great companies and great products stick out. That is a great example to me. Um, it's just something I noticed it immediately when I got them too. I was like, hey, check that out. That's awesome. So I got those, made that little switch panel. Also, I'm using Maven Performance bulkhead, firewall bulkhead. I get that stuff from him. Um, those are great. And then even this guy, you know, kind of surprises me. It's like, I order these parts from him. I love talking with him, we, you know, talk shop and whatnot. And this guy makes me a little streetcar Joe steering wheel button for my steering wheel. Just, just because he, he can and he likes to do cool stuff like that. That's what, that's what stands out in businesses to me. Like, I didn't ask for that. He's like, he just threw that in the box and surprised me. How cool is that? So anyways, maybe we'll work with him and maybe we could like sell those if people wanted them. I think it turned out super cool, but boom, there you go. 
Megan Performance, definitely check them out. We also got, I don't know where it is, it's somewhere around here, um, like turbo mounts for this car, all came from Maven. He sells tons of parts, check them out. Um, he's got a lot of bulkheads for uh, electrical, so on and so forth. So that kind of covers the electrical real quick. I have more supplies in here, but let's get this camera on the tripod and just start talking about the toolbox. Uh, what's in my toolbox? What do you need to wire a streetcar? So I'm gonna have to talk with my hands here. Maybe I should get like a pointer or something, but we're just gonna kind of go through. This is the top drawer of the box. Um, this kind of houses all my crimps and, you know, some miscellaneous tools. So we'll just start over here. Um, these are the less used crimps on the left-hand side, just some generic, you know, wire cutters and crimps, nice pair of scissors. Um, and then I have, you know, like the, I think these are MSD. Yeah, these are MSD. They have some in here for doing um, some uh, connectors terminals but you can also put like spark plug things in here to do spark plug wires and whatnot so those are just some random ones and then we have these uh these are for the delphi um this is a gm part number i don't know if you can see that let me see if i can get it to focus there you go there's the gm part number of these but these are for doing um the mini seal connectors so these would be the gt150 connectors these are for the three pin connectors that you always see for all your holly sensors these do that terminal specific and these are amazing at doing them so you definitely need a set of these um keep going you know we got the yellow and the greens these are for i think holly branded ones one does holly terminals and one does like weather pack connectors they're um they're good i don't use those as much as i used to i have some generic crimps and some generic wire strippers hardly ever use those um these are the sergeant um crimpers these are what most people use one of these does holly and then the other ones like ones for small and ones for medium um but these do tons of different i think i had those backwards this is small this is medium but these do tons of different uh connectors these do the holly terminals as well uh, and just tons of stuff so you definitely need a pair of each of those in your toolbox they're pretty cheap too um and then these are the te um deutsch connectors that crimp the deutsch connectors these also do the maven firewall bulkheads these do tons of uh different stuff they're adjustable they're kind of pricey but you need them they're great i have just a generic pair of uh crimpers these are really good these are for doing uninsulated um, I'll show you in a sec. I use mostly uninsulated uh, stuff for doing crimping and then your own heat shrink. So definitely use these. These also do insulated, but I don't do any insulated stuff. Um, and then moving on, I have some here. Let me move you guys real quick. Boom. Look how handy that was. Okay. I got some. Oh, sorry. I just kicked you. <laughs> I got some uh, wire strippers. These are my favorite style of wire strippers. Um, I've used this style for a long time. You can know, like Lowe's, Amazon. I got two pairs. Klein. Um, these are the nicer ones. These work really, really good. Um, and then, yeah, I got a voltmeter here. Oh, sorry. A uh, voltmeter, tester, multimeter. So I'm just wire. I use these wire cutters for everything. These are called flush cutters or side cutters. So they're really thin, low profiles. These are great for cutting zip ties because it doesn't leave a sharp point. It leaves them nice and smooth. But I use these for cutting everything these days. Um, I love them. I got a bunch of pairs all over. Um, and then someone's knocking at my door. I'll be there in a sec. But so then I got like uh, my normal stuff that I use. Electrical tape, electrical tape. I got some Tessa harness tape in here. That gives a nice finish if you're building some harnesses. And then I have some generic, you know, wire fi This is just some, you know, adhesive lined heat shrink. I use this on just general stuff. I also have their uninsulated crimps here. So this is just, you know, metal crimps you use to connect a bunch of wires. Step down connectors, I use these. These are for like going one wire into like five wires. Um, so like Holly, you know, the five volt reference. You can take, you know, your one orange wire and then use one of these and split it out to five and go to five different sensors. So that's kind of nice. I use those a bunch in the custom harnesses I do. And then I got some generic Deutsch connectors here. These are just, like I said, generic ones that I, different sizes, different kits. Just, you know, I got a bunch of four pins here. I use like on shock sensors. These are the bigger uh, 12 gauge. So you can fit 10 and 12 gauge wires in these. Um, and then they got the boots as well. So like these are super, super nice. And then they even have the lip on them for the heat shrink. Um, so I use those for like fans and the bigger stuff. So that kind of covers the first drawer. Let me um, go see what the knock was about and I'll be right back and we'll keep going. Okay, uh, going on to the next. So, I mean, we're gonna go through this pretty quick, but you can just kind of see. So this is like my generic stuff. 
Um, I got, you know, a few of the big relays in here. Uh, Maven Performance steering wheel button, actually. Um, you know, so the wires and extra sensor, tons of extra sensors over here. Firewall bulkheads, you know, firewall uh, grommets. I just got tons of different, I mean, that's kind of like a junk drawer, to be honest. Um, beneath it, I think junk drawer number two. Um, so I have a bunch of spare relays in here, fuses, your steering wheel buttons, some like timed relays, and then yeah, just a bunch of miscellaneous. I got resistors and terminal strips and battery terminals, whole bunch of stuff. Cruising along. This would be, you know, miscellaneous drawer. I do actually have some un uh, insulated crimps. You know, if I'm helping a neighbor or something, I need something, I can use some of that stuff. I have some solid state relays, a test light. Um, I got some like of that heat sleeve for vacuum stuff in here, uh, connector pull downs, just kind of another miscellaneous drawer. I got lots of miscellaneous drawers. Um, so there's bigger electrical stuff, soldering iron, heat gun, timing light. Yeah, yeah. who still has a timing light in their toolbox? Um, shout out small block forward people. But actually I use a timing light on all this new stuff to verify timing as well. So anyways, and then this last drawer, this is wire sleeve. So this is the, um, You'll notice F6. These are made by what is this? Uh, Tech 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 Flex or something like that. I think it's Tech Flex. Um, but this is like the harness that comes on Fuel Tech stuff. It's a really nice wire loom. Um, it's split loom. It's super nice. Um, I have I got a ton of it. Um, they call it yeah woven material. So this, this stuff is great, but it's the F6 is the brand of it, but this is what comes on like fuel tech. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to loom all of my new harness in the new car. We'll talk about that in a sec, um, but I have tons of it in all different sizes if I ever need it. So then let's go, let's go to the left side over here. Um, all right, top left drawer. Oh, I actually do have some actual tools in here. here Milwaukee set of ratchets, and then I got ratcheting wrenches and ratcheting wrenches. So moving on then, I got, uh, this is like a lead set. This is, a, it's like, um, it's a, a diagnostic tool. So it'll tell you like the voltages, if it's hot or if it's grounded. You can apply power and ground with this. Super great diagnostic tool. I got some Maven coil mounts and then just a spare Holly sensor. So, and then over here, more wire loom and zip ties. This is the Alex Tech uh, wire loom. It's like the generic stuff. You get it on Amazon. Um, I got tons of it. I use it quite a bit. I had it all in my last Mustang. I like it. Um, you know, it's a good, cheap alternative. It looks nice. So I, I highly recommend that for miscellaneous projects. I have both sets of wire looms. You know, I don't know, necessarily know what I'm going to do on the new car. But now let's get front and center for the main drawers. Cruising along. Miscellaneous drawer. I got tons of firewall bulkheads here. Um, I get a lot of stuff from ProWire, but they have, um, I think these are auto sport connectors, um, but they have tons of different firewall bulkheads. These, uh, I got some firewall bulkheads here for power, um, like some 10 gauge, four pin connectors for the, you know, bring a lot of power out. Um, I have Deutsch connectors here. These are actual Deutsch connectors. These are DTM, so they're the mini Deutsch connectors, so they're smaller than the normal ones. These are 16 pins. These are going to be used for the injector harness. Um, so two of those. And then I have, um, you know, these are four pins. Also the DTM, so they're smaller than normal. These have the lip on them for the heat shrink, so you can completely seal these. I'm going to talk about that in a sec. I use these for like shock sensors and stuff. Then I even have the three pins. What's cool about the three pins of the DTMs, the minis, is they're flat. They're not triangle like a normal Deutsch DT connector. So that's really cool for a three pin. And then I have some two pins as well for some miscellaneous stuff on the shifter or whatnot. So just kind of, and then I have some LED lights over there for, um, you know, like inside interior lights. I may be doing the under lighting for the suspension on the new car as well. This drawer, we can talk about this real quick. So this is, um, you know, the ECU Master PWM was here. Or not PWM, PDM was here. I have my shock sensors, low dollar motorsports. Um, a random guy makes these, I forget his name, he's on Facebook, he makes these. So this is a little canister that you use for like back pressure on turbo systems or really anything if you need to try to calm the signal down. If your signal's too erratic, you can use one of these, mount it remotely, sensor goes in this and it can help calm down your signals. 
Got that there. Um, I have a mad racing laser ride height sensor. These are super cool. So you can put that like on your rear end or on the front end. You put it on the front end, you can use it for wheelie control. You put it on the rear end on the housing and you can see like how hard you're hitting your tire and what the tire is doing. So many different uses for these. I got that. Also, I don't see this Manila envelope right here that has a calibrated um, sensor. They, um, I won't say, is it Mad Racing that does that? Glenn, is that the same guy? I'll need to double check this, but I think it's Glenn Mad Racing. I think that's the same guy, but he takes these uh, NTK sensors and he calibrates them. And he's found out that like, if your sensor is calibrated for the wide open air fuel that you normally target, it'll be a lot more accurate than if it's not. So, and it doesn't cost much. So I got one of those, I recommend that. I'll need to find out who it is. I'll hopefully put it on the screen. Plimptum Innovations, this is a cool new thing I'm pretty proud of. This is a weather sensor. Um, so this actually will go into the Holly and give you weather data. So you can have like your water grains, your barometric pressure, your density altitude, all that in your logs and you can make tune changes based on that. So if you're like a nitrous car and the water grains are really high or really low, you could change timing with it. And then I have, this is all the ECU master stuff. This would be like the flying lead harness is what they call them. So, I mean, it's just the harness that plugs in. It's got the connector on it. So I got that ready to go. <clears throat> um, super nice cut stuff. They use all quality wire. Um, I think it's Tesla or TXL wire. So good stuff. I got my low dollar sensors here that, you know, I use those for non-critical things, transmission pressure sensors and whatnot. I do think I'm gonna put some Rife sensors on this car as well, but for now, that's where we're at. I got some titanium hardware here. Just, uh, yeah, don't worry about that stuff. Coming down, heat shrink. <clears throat> I probably need to back this up a little bit. Let's back this up a little bit so you can see better. Oh, there we go. So heat shrink here. This is tons, mostly Raycam heat shrink. Um, I have a ton of that. I also have the Wi-Fi that you get on Amazon, the adhesive backed heat shrink. Um, but then, you know, I got just gobs and gobs of the Raycam stuff. I get this from Race Spec. Um, they sell a ton of it. I got both the styles here. Um, the ones that, you know, shrink down a whole bunch and the ones that don't shrink down that much. And then I have, you know, some of this stuff with the clear and the yellow so you can label stuff. Um, and then I have the boot connectors for like the injectors. So I'm actually gonna make 100% sealed harness for the 16 injectors. So it'll have all the Raycam on it and it'll be completely sealed from the boot all the way to the Deutsch connector. 100% sealed, no loom, just all good. Um, you know, for methanol cars, if you get methanol over that stuff, this is the preferred way to do it. Um, so I'll have that done. I'll show you, I'll probably have a video on that. And then the bottom, you know, I got this big box, but I, let's move that out of the way. You know, there's a lot of my wire, um, TXL wire, uh, mostly. I got Tefsil wire as well, and just all different sizes, 10 gauge up to 22 gauge in different colors and different assortments, lots of reds and blacks, lots of oranges for Holly 5 volt, and so on and so forth. And then the big box is a bunch of miscellaneous scrap wire that I use for all sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's all the wire. And in record time, I have finished uh, the toolbox tour. So let me reset up the camera. We'll kind of wrap this up and yeah, there, there we are. All right, so I know I breezed through that pretty quick, but you know, quick toolbox review, talk about the, you know, some of the electronics I have for my car. And I, like I said, I'm gonna make this a series. There'll be a lot more um, going into what you need to wire your car and kind of the processes of as I go through it and where to get it and whatnot. If you have more questions, I know I went through that really quick, but I didn't want to bore people with a 30 minute long video. I could talk forever on this stuff. I really enjoy wiring, kind of my passion, even more so than fabricating and building turbo kits and stuff. So I, um, I could just go on forever. So if you have questions, be sure to drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer everything that I can. I'll be doing a garage update this week. Um, I'm making tons of progress on my car, this car, we're waiting on parts. We're actually you know, waiting on parts everywhere. But I, so I started on this car um, and I'll just kind of go over. I'll show you pictures of the O3 Cobra and the single turbo kit on. That thing turned out amazing, really cool setup. So uh, lots of content coming, um, I'm, my legs all healed up, I'm good to go. Uh, so I'm gonna be working on cars regularly, videos are gonna be coming more regular again, um, especially as I go full steam ahead on my car. You know, I got 90% of the parts here for it, the engine and transmission are in it right now. I'm working on doing like the motor plate, mid plates, I'm gonna have videos on that. And then, you know, I've been working on the interior, sealing it all up. I'll talk over how I do that and what's my process. 
I sealed up the firewall. Like I just got so much going on with that car and we're just cruising along. We got air conditioning, it's like 98 degrees outside right now and we're just in here comfortable, shorts and t-shirt, working good. So, super long-winded. Here's my new toolbox. That's all my great electrical supplies and kind of what's in there and where I'm gonna be going and what I got for my new car. I'm really excited for it, as you can tell. So, be sure to like this, uh, follow along. I'm gonna make this a series, you know, wiring a street car. And you know, this will be a many part series. We're gonna do Holly, it's gonna be awesome. Lots of new cool tech in there. Can't wait. You guys stick along. Thanks for sticking with me. Sorry it's been so long, but they're gonna be coming more often. I promise. See you guys on the next one.